This program is sponsored in part by the Center for Freedom and Prosperity and the Vernon K. Kriebel Foundation. I'm from Appalachia, a coal miner's daughter. For hundreds of years, people settled here to find freedom. They persevered by relying on themselves and their family to survive. Nice. Very nice. But my home has changed. We've lost our self-reliance. Appalachia has been left to fail. I'm Emerald, a proud Appalachian, and I want to thrive, not just survive. So I'm going to Washington, D.C. and team up with famed economist Dr. Richard Ron, and together we will find those people around the globe who are thriving against all odds. First off, Santiago, Chile. Founded in 1541, this now booming metropolis has served as the country's capital since colonial times. Thanks to Santiago's steadily growing economy, the city is home to a beautiful rising skyline, a thriving theater scene, urban development, dozens of shopping centers, and a restaurant scene to rival any metropolitan city around the globe. It's also home to the tallest building in Latin America. And it's inspiring because in just a relatively short amount of time, it is shedding its status as a poor country and has emerged as a developed country. A country brimming with individual success stories, individuals who have benefited from policies of economic freedom that allow ordinary citizens of this country to dream. Carolina Enchenique was inspired to start her unique brand of snacks, Tika Chips, right in her garage. I had a dream. I look at my husband. I, I just look at him straight into his eyes and I say, okay, I'm gonna start all over. I'm gonna do this healthy snack called whatever that is going to be with different vegetables from Chile, all natural and colored. And I don't know, I'm gonna start this adventure. Needless to say, Carolina outgrew her garage and has had to greatly expand her original team of just three employees. I just thought it was going to be a cool product, really good, and I don't know, everyone was going to need it or have it close to their homes in little stores. But now we are in more than 3,000 points of sale in Chile, mm -hmm. and uh, we're expanding all over. We're, ex we're exporting to 12 different countries. This allowed us to, uh, to employ a lot of people all over the world, and this is just free trade. How does this place pull itself up out of the mire of poverty to reach prosperity? My journey began with one man that had a vision, a dream of a better Chile. That man is Jose Piñera, former Minister of Labor, Social Security, and Mines. Piñera instituted a novel idea of a privatized pension plan system that would provide Chile with the capital it needed to grow into a now developed country and to inspire a different way of living for its people. It was very important, uh, Emerald, at the very beginning in 1975 and the later years, to do a set of coherent and quite radical free market reforms. In the 1980s, Pinera introduced a system that took Social Security savings accounts and redirected the money into projects that created wealth, generated growth, and provide financial security for retired citizens. Jose Pinera believed freedom also means the freedom to plan for your future on your own terms. That's where his reforms began. Why don't we create a system mm -hmm. of personal retirement accounts where you save for old age so that your benefits are strictly related to your effort of work and saving. Mm -hmm. So it's a system based on responsibility, on saving, on effort, on liberty. Francisco Roncare, CEO and founder of Territory Real Estate Group, remembers growing up in a Chile where poverty persisted and survival wasn't easy. So I was 12 and uh, but so I, my, my child was about making lines to get bread, uh, making lines at supermarket to get oil. Uh, my mother used to send me as if you were in, uh, in, in um, in your state, I mean, we, we didn't have provisions to actually to feed the family. My vision of freedom was very limited because basically I, I wasn't free. I didn't have food. It's just as simple as that. Most realized that prosperity to Chile would come out of a 
freedom, economic freedom. Because freedom is what activates innovation. Freedom is what gives you that extra effort that you need to get a business going. The economic boom did more than create jobs for Chileans and grow the cityscape of Santiago. It had another interesting effect that I wanted to see firsthand. Beachfront living for the average Chilean. 30 years ago, the Strip was nothing but rock and sand. A lot has changed here with freer economic policies. The wealth to create these beautiful condos came from new productive and innovative businesses in Chile. Pedro Larock, entrepreneur and member of Chile's middle class, invited me to take in the view from his oceanfront condo in the beautiful Viña del Mar. This is the really wonder of free market, of the free market revolution. We middle class people who can afford to buy their dreams of this incredible view to the ocean. I was born in 1975. I, I am, as you can, <laughs> as you might say, uh, a son of the economic free market revolution. Chile's geography within itself has been an obstacle to overcome for economic prosperity. A long, narrow country, about twice the size of California, it has an average width of only about 110 miles, with a very arid desert in the north and rough mountainous terrain in the south. It has extreme natural events, volcanic eruptions, violent earthquakes and tsunamis. In fact, to understand how far Chile has come, you need to know where it came from. Just 40 years ago, Santiago was a very different place. Almost half of all Chileans lived below the poverty line. Inflation was at 150%. Full democracy was restored in 1990. Economic reforms were begun in the early 1980s, and the country went from one of the least economically free to one of the most economically free. Now the average Chilean retires with more than the average American. The average annual rate of return has exceeded more than 9% over the last 30 years for Chilean workers, much greater than the 1% to 2% rate of return that U.S. Social Security pays. Let's put that into perspective, where I can expect roughly $18,000 in today's dollars from Social Security at age 62, a Chilean colleague of my same age could retire with an annual pension of $55,000. But Pinera wasn't finished yet. He also transformed the way Chile engages with the rest of the world. He realized that prosperity could only be sustained by competing in the world marketplace. We began with opening the economy to free trade, lowering and eliminating import tariffs, import quotas, regulations, allowing Chile to both import the best products from all over the world at the same time, export in order to get the dollars to buy the imports. With its unique geography and a climate described as being midway between California and France, Chile is a perfect location for agriculture in general. However, the Mediterranean climate and the natural pest barriers of the Atacama Desert to the north and the ice fields of Patagonia to the south make it perfect for growing grapes and making wine. The wine, in a way, became a serious business in the second half of the 19th century. In the 1980s, and most of the companies started looking outside Chile. The economy was not that big to justify so many companies. Most of them, Santa Carolina is one among them, and we may be an example of how, how to grow outside, but we started growing in many different countries out, outside Chile. Thank goodness for free trade. It would be a shame for the rest of the world to be missing out on this. The name Chile itself is most commonly accepted to be derived from the native Aymara word Chile, meaning the land where the earth ends. But there is no end to the hope and warmth that I have found in this country. But finally it was time to head back to Santiago to wrap up my time here in Chile. As I prepared to return home, Dr. Ron and I talked about all I had learned here in Chile over a nice outdoor lunch in the Chilean sunshine. The key reasons Chile has succeeded are first of all the rule of law with honest judges, strong protection of private property, basically free markets, largely free trade, relatively low tax rates, fairly low levels of government spending, reasonable regulations, and a stable currency. Pretty simple. It's 
<laughs> Through innovation, Chile has emerged from the shadow of poverty to become a leader in Latin America, with economic lessons that could well be applied here. Despite its unusual geography and troubled past, this country is full of vibrant, inspiring, and warm people, and has declared itself as improbably successful.